Well, folks, out on the street, it's been a bit of a political minefield over the last couple of days or so, particularly with what happened in the recent by-election in Rochdale. And, of course, we took in that wonderful sight of Rishi Sunak's pathetic speech outside Downing Street yesterday, early evening. And there's a video on the channel where I talk about that and what I think. Well, what I'm here for today is to go through what you think. As you know, you make so many, so many comments every single day. There's literally millions over the li lifetime of the channel. And I like to do one or two comment readback videos every week just to share some of your thoughts. Now, I put a video together yesterday regarding my initial thoughts about what happened up there in Rochdale and my feelings about why reform did as bad as they did. And you can go and watch that. It's in my videos from yesterday. But without further ado, I want to go through your comments and let's have a look what you had to say. Right, let's have a look. So, Suzanne Watson, I would never vote for a party who thinks immigration is acceptable. Aidan Well Smith, it is as long as it makes economic sense. One, no criminals, bar them and deport them. Two, no discrimination, no pro white EU nonsense like Remain Join. Uh, net contributors only, minimum tax code of 38,500 a year, increasing in line with average earnings. That applies to new and current migrants. That solves all the issues. You know, one thing that we lose sight of here, uh, you know, it's uncontrolled what's going on at the moment. In fact, there's no control whatsoever. It's out of it. But what if I wanted to move to Australia? Or what if I wanted to move to Spain or the Canary Islands or anywhere other than here? There are specific hoops I have to jump through. There's a certain amount of money I have to bring with me. And there are certain other requirements I have to meet before I'm to be considered as a resident, albeit, you know, on a work visa or permanent resident of the country I want to go to. That way it's controlled. That way it's managed. And you get people in a country where they have the relevant skills where they can contribute. This is something that's been going on for years and years and years. In fact, I have relatives of mine that moved to Australia about 30 years ago. And when they come back to visit, they sound like something out of an episode of Neighbours. But when you look to this country, it's out of control. You know, boats sneaking across on lorries, turning up and claim. And we're too much of a soft target, too much of a soft touch. And we see events that are transpiring and it's no longer good enough. No longer good enough if it was in the first place. Now, let's have a look at some more. Uh, no one in particular. No undocumented, no known history migrants allowed. Uh, I mean, they're chucking the stuff in the channel on the way over, aren't they? Susan Watson, at some point in time, we are all, uh, ladies included, grow a pair and kind of get... <laughs> it's going to come to that eventually. Uh, I, I fear it will, and we're starting to see the beginnings of it. Free beer for the workers. <laughs> I worked there 25 years ago, and as a council employee, I was accompanied by an interpreter, as many in riches had never bothered to learn English, apart from delivery people. I was the only white face in the area at times, and if I was on my own, I was asked to quite politely what I wanted there. Consequently, I fully expected someone like George Galloway would win. Mm. Uh, Hugh Williams, so 30,000 refugees per annum is unacceptable, as they're not doc documented. 750,000 per annum legal immigration is okay. That's so backwards, mate. I don't think that's what he's saying, Hugh. I, I don't think that's what he's saying. You know, there, there should be limits on that as well. Uh, you know, we can't just have again and again and again and again. We're struggling to cope as it is. We're struggling to cope. I feel, me personally, I know it's drastic, but I think the drawbridge needs pulling up and we need to look at this situation again anew. 
Uh, Rosie Mason, no, it really isn't. There's more to this than just economics, much more. Uh, Wayne Barton's, do we really need these politicians to live our lives? Well, no, we don't. Uh, I, you know, I think a complete shake up of our way that we are politically managed is really very much overdue. Uh, John Courier, Galloway was the clear winner due to the, well, demographic of the vote in Rochdale. The video I bring it, I've brought out earlier, and you can watch that as well, analyzes those results in a little bit more detail. There were so many missing. Uh, non and Knight, how true. Nobody's forgotten Blair. Uh, Ian, with a sympathizer in charge, God help. Yeah, I know what you mean. All of that history of that going on. Uh, John Donson, how would reform do well in Rochdale with the demographic there? Well, they wouldn't. And also, I'm, I've been very critical of the choice of candidate that they put there as well. Uh, I, I really couldn't see the sense in that because that isn't reform. It's not reforming anything of any kind. Uh, total nutter. Blair vowed to rub diversity in the noses of the right, and now it's cost Labour their seat. It's not often politics is this entertaining. Prime Minister question time is going to be a blast. You can see it now, and they need to grow up. Uh, George Galloway, I'll be the cat, is all you need to know. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Joe Keats, George Galloway, only represents George Galloway. I've seen that said in other places. I have. Uh, David Upton, there's no fate for what we make for ourselves. Sarah Connor, very, very true. User, it's the end of Sunak and Starmer. The establishment will be running scared now. They haven't got any backbone, any of them. You know, a little bit of pressure. Now run for the hills. Uh, Mr. Menza, there should be a none of the above option. Yeah, the, you know, what's happening here is people are just not coming out to vote because they're either disenfranchised or the party that they thought would do it for them no longer does. So they think, yeah, why do I bother? What they should do is come out with this and write, I do not consent. It is in the law. Uh, and, you know, I will do a video at some point and point out exactly where it is. A couple more. So, uh, Blue Streak, I noticed the postal voting has gone up dramatically to over 32,000. I hope they're not getting any ideas from America. You know what? I have a problem with postal voting. Originally, it was supposed to be for, you know, people that couldn't get out of the house, elderly, that kind of thing. And, you know, those that weren't present to give them a chance to vote. But it seems now that everybody can send a postal vote in. Me personally, I don't trust them. I don't trust the postal vote. If I'm not there to put this X on that piece of paper, then how do I know it's going to where it should be and counted how it should be? It's a very valid point. Uh, Mick, why do people still think voting is the answer to all of our problems? There, there's many possible solutions to all of our problems, but that is the most uh, legally feasible, I think. But, it, it, you know, enough people have got to come out. Otherwise, we're going to get stuck with this first pass of post nonsense for evermore. Eden, and then we'll make this the last comment, an MP is supposed to represent his constituency and the people in that area. For him to know those people's problems and needs, the candidate should be a permanent resident of that area and have been a permanent resident in that area for at least the last 10 years. How else would they understand the needs of that area? This way, a candidate has a vested interest in the people of the constituency they want to support and not just looking for a seat that will get them into parliament. In other words, a career politician. Who bloody rah. I agree with every single word you just said there. Now, this is what they do. We've seen it with different politicians. They parachuted into different seats. 
to to take them and they have no idea about the area in which they're coming into it has to stop you know we talk about reform often it's got to be a system of community leaders that actually live and work in the places where they're going into know something about them and can actually help it's not rocket science and all of the people in parliament and in positions of power as we saw with sunak yesterday are going oh, 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 oh enough really is enough that's the only thing i can agree with him on anyway that's enough of your comments thank you very much as always i always like sharing them with you and everybody else if you want to watch another one of my videos there's one there and as always i look forward to talking to you again soon doodaloo